dipping, dipping sharply in September. Local PMI improved last month, but it is still just below the 50-point break-even level. The Cajiso PMI recovered to 49.8 points last month from 48.6 the previous month. Joining us with more are Theo Fawcett, Director at Cajiso Securities, and Nikki Weimar, Senior Economist at Nedbank. A very warm welcome to both of you. Uh, you know, you're talking about this neutral level, 49.8 uh, points uh, in October, and, and looking much better than what we saw in September, Theo, but what's really disappointing is the employment part of, of the PMI number, which is really showing that if we don't see a recovery in employment, then manufacturing is going to really come under pressure going forward. Good afternoon. Yes, all the sub-indices were higher bar for employment. Now, all is not above 50, but all were better than last month, specifically business activities just below 50. Now, that, that perhaps tells us that the strikes in the previous two months had a bigger impact than one would have thought. That recovered. The new sales orders are looking great. And the, the, the strong, strongest point is the expected business activities. That reached a high that we haven't seen for six months. But yes, the tragic number is the... 44.8 is where the employment yes. number is. The tragic number is the employment number. And that was, we've been going negative for these readings have been negative for the past six months. And this is almost like it, it, it's a kind of implosion. It is a tragic number. It is way off what it was. And if you look at the fact that the manufacturing sector employs roughly 1.7 million people out of a total employment number of about 12 odd million, uh, it's a big percentage. And unfortunately, that is where we're going to see the pain. And that was the, that's the one sad number in the set of numbers. Well, and Nikki, we know that uh, employment is a lagging indicator. Mm -hmm. It does lag a recovery. Do you think it's been lagging for too long? And, and also we're seeing other sectors still shedding jobs by, by the bucket load. Yes, I think that, you know, obviously, I mean, after four quarters of growth, you would expect some stabilization, and the fact that they're still shedding is a bit of a problem. Um, but like you said, it is a lagging indicator. It can take a year of growth. Um, but I think that the recovery has just been too feeble, and that's the reason we haven't seen, um, you know, employment tick up. And employment's not just a function of, of past growth. It's also a function of how people view the future. If they look into the future businesses and they, they, they expect uh, this upswing to be a fairly modest one, to f be a fairly subdued one, they may feel that they have um, enough capacity or, 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 or too much and they, they need to cut costs where they can and um, you know make themselves nice and lean and uh, ready to face a, a fairly tough cycle. You took the words out of my mouth, mm -hmm. leaner and meaner businesses going forward and I suppose because the manufacturing sector is so sensitive to the local currency, it seems that most of these businesses are very uh, cognizant of what will happen on the currency fronts and also demand scenarios as well here. Yes, the, the, there is a major portion of the manufacturing is being exported if you just look at the motor manufacturers one and yes local demand that's the two drivers from a who's the, the two drivers from a demand perspective now we have seen the strong currency which will have an impact even if it's just on margins it will have a major impact but secondly local demand if demand is, is slack and not picking up that means that it's not going to be there. However, what I have to stress is if you look at the forward-looking sub-indices, specifically expected business conditions and forward orders, they've actually picked up nicely. So fr from in that portion of the sector has picked up. But then again, we need to realize that this is a month-on-month -month survey. Uh, so it's, it's picked up from last month. That doesn't mean that it's picked up strongly if you look at it forward-looking. But still, the, the counterbalance, as Nikki was saying, is there's not a lot of confidence in that pickup purely because of the, uh, of the fact that we come off a, long, a low base, number one. But number two, the employment number shows you that there's not confidence going forward. And yes, perhaps lean and mean is the, is the answer if you look at the future. And, and this is despite the, the pickup in the expected business conditions. It's above 60 for the first time since May. So is that not a strong enough pickup in expected conditions, Nikki, do you think, to create jobs? I think that's encouraging. I mean, uh, it sort of lifts the mood. It makes us all feel a little bit more optimistic. But I think the reality of, of, of is simply that we face a fairly, the global economy face fairly complex problems um, that will ta take quite a, quite a feat of management to get the, the world economy uh, through that and still growing at a rapid pace or accelerating pace. And I think the general consensus there is that you're going to have um, a very unimpressive uh, performance from industrialized mm -hmm. countries for a couple of years. And the momentum is really going to come from emerging markets, but emerging markets are not at 
this stage big enough uh, to propel the entire world economy to a higher growth plane. So consequently, you're looking at a fairly subdued picture coming from the world economy, and that seems to be increasingly the case. Just as we think we've got momentum globally, there are setbacks and there are signs of sort of lingering and persistent weakness in some sectors. And it seems that just unemployment is one of the big issues right now. When you right. look to the U.S., this is why they want to pump in more money into okay. the economy. Uh, you know, looking here at South Africa, we know that government is really um, adamant about creating more jobs, especially in the private sector. Uh, we're talking about the PMI number and just looking at that, that employment number, 44.8, expected business uh, confidence recovering to around 60 points. Theo, when do you think employment is going to recover in the manufacturing sector? Look, I think it's a question of confidence. I think we need enough confidence in the future of the sector for people to start re-employing new people into the sector or new, to p create new jobs, and we are not at that level. And where do we need to see the PMI number overall so that we do see an uptick in, in employment? Well, we need to see a stronger number. We need to see a number confi confidently above 50, by, uh, above 50, which means the sector is expanding. Remember, although this is positive, this is still below 50. That means the sector is contracting month on month ever so slightly, but it's still not a positive sector in terms of that we're above 50. And what I do, however, think is if you look at the medium-term budget of last week, if you look at the inflation numbers, if you look at the comments about the more balanced mandate from the Reserve Bank, I think this almost seals the case for an interest rate cut in, the next, in two weeks' time. I think where the chance was probably 50, 60 percent, my guess is that this probably gives that a 70 to 80 percent chance. We also had that new growth plan outlined last week. Well, a few details of that outlined, Nikki. And they're talking about 6 percent plus growth if we are going to create jobs in South Africa. Do you think we're taking the right steps to get to that 6 percent growth trajectory? Do you think the new growth plan uh, is just going to be another plan that we don't stick to like Askisa, or do you think it has some merit? This is the trick question. This is the trick question. <laughs> okay. The well, <laughs> I have to say, I, I don't think there's much new about the new growth plan. I mean, we have heard um, the emphasis on the points they highlighted in that plan repeatedly over the past couple of years. Um, I think the key point here is delivery. I mean, if you look at some of the notions there, they are solid. The whole notion that you accelerate spending on infrastructure, especially when infrastructure have become one of your major bottlenecks to higher long-term growth. Infrastructure in the short term might give a boost to some industries, but it really is the key to long-term growth, to greater efficiency, to lowering import costs, to making you more competitive. So clearly, without a shadow of a doubt, that being a, a, a point to stress, and also as it was came through in the medium-term budget policy statement, completely agree with that. But the thing is that we're not seeing that. We're actually seeing the government spending on infrastructure is slowing. In fact, it's declining. And that by public corporations is slowing. So we're seeing the reverse. We have these pl plans announced, but we're not actually seeing delivery coming through. And I think it's the delivery which has now become the key. So before you judge it, there's nothing wrong with the, with the idea. It's a solid idea. But, uh, but the delivery simply, I think they have to prove to us that they're actually going to do that before you can comment.